It's the Hero Show. Welcome to the Hero Show, everybody. Starring the irrepressible Andrew Bernstein and the Renaissance Robert Begley. I am Andrew Bernstein, and you are indubitably Robert Begley. How you doing today, Robert? I'm doing great, Andy. While talking about Renaissance, that is the era we are covering today. A man who wanted to be the greatest hero of his era. Very excited about today's right subject. And we're talking about uh, who may very well have lived out that that aspiration. We're talking about the great explorer, perhaps the greatest of all explorers, Ferdinand Magellan, and his remarkable attempts to circum circumnavigate the globe. In 1520, yeah. <laughs> when they not only had these tiny, tiny little boats, they, you know, they're, they're really boats more than ships, perhaps, but they're uh, yeah. not the most seaworthy craft, certainly by modern standards. And, and maybe worse than that, yeah. he had no charts, no maps, no knowledge of where, of where he was going, no contact with anybody on land once they were out of sight uh, of Europe. It makes a... It, you know, Robert, Magellan's story makes a great comparison and contrast with Apollo 13. Because, you know, the, the great heroes yeah. of Apollo 13 yeah. were much further, 230,000 miles or so f from Earth. But, you know, so this, uh, the spaceship had an explosion. So, you know, their, their situation was dire. But then modern technology enabled them to communicate with these great scientists and engineers back at, at Houston. Uh, so they had, a lot of, they had a lot of help. Magellan, you know, he he's dealing with mutinies and storms and has no idea where 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 they, where they are. He's on his own. This is extraordinary. This is an extraordinary yeah. story. Yes, it is. And there was actually some writer. I always look for quotes in preparation for the episode, and not that many by Magellan, but many about him. And one writer, I can't remember the name, but said this was more impressive than the Apollo Eleven landing okay uh, because precisely for that reason what you just said the technology was advanced enough where communication was was consistent the entire way through Paul 13 a little bit more uh frightening but one could not have happened without the other no no magellan right, right. no apollo and the space and the space nasa you know they recognize him for that and, and have their you know magellan's name is is now attributed with all of these great uh adventures and why don't we say andy what uh episode this number i think I yeah think it's I was, a, I was, a I was, nice yes. way to celebrate yeah exactly mm -hmm. robert yes this is everybody this is episode 100 of the hero show so this is a, a mile. So mm -hmm. we did a few villains in there, but you, you know, which was also you know yes. interesting. True, you know, it was it was also but you know, it was also yeah. pertinent. But we did we on Halloween, for example. But this the hundredth episode mm -hmm. of this show. We're approaching the two year mark, so it's definitely a milestone. And we you know all of our heroes are towering figures. That's why they're on the hero show. But we wanted a we wanted a, a somebody who was especially a, a giant, and Magellan, perhaps the greatest yes. explorer uh, of history. So, so he he's a perfect hero to mark this milestone, you know, episode. And yeah. to give his dates, fourteen eighty to fifteen twenty one. Yeah. So there he is. So he dies very young. Yeah, and if we go with time. dates, Andy, if we, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. I was just going to say he dies very young, and you know, a brutal, yeah. violent death in yes. the in the in the Philippines, yeah. trying to trying to Christianize mm -hmm. the the natives. Um, but uh, yes. a short, short life, but um, his accomplishments are immortal. So, you know, we celebrate yeah, him Which for that. we'll cover. And the, the, the first circumnavigation, you say 1521, it was completed 1522, not by him, but here we are 500 years later, you know, talking about the impact of this. So that also kind of fits in with a sticking with the sticking with the centennial that's right uh 100th that's episode right. 500 years later so we got a little symmetry going on yeah no you're, you're right the the expedition was 1519 to 1522 uh so this is the 500th yeah. anniversary of its completion mm -hmm. so you know by some of yeah. magellan's subordinates at least one of whom was a leader of the mutiny right uh, was inv involved in yeah. the mutiny against that's, it that's right Yes. Well, we, yeah. We should... So why don't we set the context a little? 
Yeah, go ahead. Do you mind, Andy, if we just said, no, no. what was life like in Durham and Jalen's childhood? You know, we're getting towards the end of the Dark Ages, Middle Ages, uh, certainly Middle Ages, not Dark Ages. The Renaissance is on the horizon. And as you said, 1480, he's born. Portugal is the dominant seafaring nation on the planet, thanks to uh, Prince Henry the Navigator. And they're going mm-hmm. down the African coast. Uh, from Portugal, but their main rival on the Iberian Peninsula is Spain. They're always fighting with each other. There's a lot of tribalism. There's some overlap, Andy. In, in last session, last week's episode on Lewis and Clark, we'll we'll draw some comparison, contrast, and, and similarities. But just these, the way the 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 native Indians in America were warring tribes. Similarly, a lot of the European countries were warring tribes. And if you, the Iberian Peninsula, uh, it, Portugal and Spain were just it's, fighting each other. Yeah, know, right. It's a, it's a it's a human failing. It's all it's it's worldwide. Yes, we saw the we saw yes. the the, mm-hmm. the genocide in Rwanda. You know, in the nineteen nineties is just one yeah. example. And in, in Europe, right. in Europe for right. centuries. It took the form, the tribalism you're talking about, Robert, in Europe for centuries, it took the form of this jingoistic nationalism, you know, but it's my tribe. Yeah. You know, it's my country, my collective, that's, that's, whatever. And they fight yeah. to the death of, uh, for power. And even if you look at Spain, Andy, the, the, the Moors, you know, later the Muslims, went in in like 707, shortly after Muhammad, they went on to the Iberian Peninsula and it wasn't until 1492 that they were kicked off of it because Aragon fought with uh, Castile, who fought with this one, who fought with, you know, just all of those warring tribes within. And then they, all the Spaniards said, let's first get rid of the Moors and then we'll, <laughs> then we'll fight each other, you know? And, and it's like, <laughs> that's, that's the way that tribalist, you know, element is. But Henry, right, right. Uh, I'm sorry, um, in, um, he grows up reading about heroes. He wants to be, I mean, the best, my, my favorite book on this is uh, William Manchester's uh, A World Only Lit by Fire. And he has it's right. part, three parts and the third part is called One Man Alone. And it's about Magellan and his life. And, yeah, it's, and it's Manchester funny, it's talks funny you should time. mention that. Yeah, I always, I was just rereading that last night, you know, getting ready, for, getting ready for this show. It's, let me, let okay, me, uh, cool, cool. So we yeah, might... uh, a world, a world lit uh, only by fire by William Manchester. Great book, strongly recommend it. Right, it's a terrific yes. book on the end, yes. on the end of the Middle Ages, uh, ab- absolutely. And the beginning of the modern world. Mm-hmm. And what Manchester does is set the context because Martin Luther, you know, we'll get to like fifteen, seventeen. Martin Luther, we have Michelangelo's doing things. Yeah. There's beautiful things going on in that era. But as a as a boy, Magellan wants to be the greatest hero which Manchester will pronounce in that at the very end. Um, and I have a couple of quotes. If you if you don't have them, we'll, we'll share uh, reading them because I have a few of them. But he reads about El Cid. He reads about King Arthur. And then he reads about Marco Polo. He's 12 when Columbus discovers America and then comes back and does three more you know, voyages. So this is steeped in his mind. And uh, so he joins the, you know, he, he joins the military in uh, in Portugal and goes on these expeditions in his uh, 20s, uh, spends um, like seven years uh, from age 25 to around 30, um, 32 in, in between India and um, what we call Asia and Africa. So he's not even home that often, but he's fighting. He's he's. Uh, you know, he's not afraid of battling, but also of exploring. And yeah, he so, was uh, he was uh, he a soldier, in one battle. right? Yeah, he was yes. a soldier, yeah. which makes his seamanship all the more extraordinary that he became he became yes. known as 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 a great seaman and a great navigator. So you know, so he yeah. had you know he had multiple multiple yeah. multiple talents, and he you know, you read the battles talents. he fought. Yeah, he he had he had made it to mm-hmm. the Spice Islands. For, for sailing for Portugal east, right around uh, around That's the right. uh, Cape of Good Hope, the the southern tip of Africa. That's right. So it's so he he, yeah. he, he had done half the journey already he, he, by by going east. So his great his great expedition in yeah. nineteen was was going west, you know, to, and then around Cape That's Horn. Right. So he didn't go around Cape Horn because he because he found a better way. But uh, so, but anyhow, yeah, yeah. So so he was he, he was already he'd already been in the South Seas going. 
you know, in, in by a different route in the in the opposite direction, as it were. So yeah, uh, I'm sorry. That was so 50, you, that was about, no, that's that's fine, Andy. Just bringing us up to the context of of uh, right before the the voyage and and uh, his background. So 1511, he's out there on the Spice Islands in Malacca, which is in Malaysia. And part of the, he buys a slave called Enrique, buys him. And he's his slave, but also he's companion and his interpreter because he wants to go back and, uh, and trade for profit. That's, that's his thing. And because he had gone one way, he, had this vision of going uh, straight west, and that was spurred on by Balboa, not Rocky Balboa, but uh, <laughs> but Balboa seeing the Panama Canal, and that what's now became the Panama Canal, seeing through Panama where uh, the Pacific was, and uh, that impressed Magellan. That oh, okay, there's another ocean, and let's use the smaller size globe that you know that was uh, understood at the time and i'll just i'll just uh sail around <clears throat> the southern tip and make my way uh in three or four days he assumed uh to uh, right. spice islands <laughs> yeah it was a daring you know daring adventure right it was it was just a a very yeah. original conception you know on, on magellan's part and and yeah. s several times he was rebuffed by the portuguese king Correct, because he was yes. he was Portuguese. Yes, that... and he was a he was Portuguese soldier, and he wanted to sail for what? Portugal, but the king the king reject rejected the plan, and and and, and humiliated the him. King Did he turn his back on him or something? That when they he were he humiliated were him. That's yeah, yeah. He humiliated. Him. Well, and, and Magellan similarly. His he wasn't the easiest. You know, he had yeah. he was very direct. And you know, I think of a, Sebastian Dancon. Wasn't a, yeah, he wasn't a kiss just, up no. courtier, was was he? No. You know the no. way you know the way Sebastian Danconia throws the contents of his <laughs> of his wine glass and the you know before yeah. bolting. That's kind of what I think of Magellan with uh, with the Portuguese he was king. Blunt. But the second time, right. yes, he was blocked. This is the second time he's a, he's somebody went to Portugal. He, he was a soldier, right? He yeah. was a soldier. He wasn't a, wasn't a courtier. That's right. But it's the second time a navigator, an explorer, went to Portugal saying, we can, we can find the Indies and the spice trade by going west. First one was Columbus. They turned him down. He went to Spain. And here we are. Uh, Magellan also goes to the king, and they turn him down. So he goes to Spain, the rival country. And it's the grand King Charles comes in as the king. He's 18 years old. He is the grandson of Isabel and Ferdinand. So these overlapping uh, parallels right. with, uh, with Columbus right. He's, uh, and Carlos, Magellan. Carlos, Carlos the first, king of Spain. Yes. Well, Charles the first in yep. English. Becomes Charles the right. fifth, the Holy Roman Emperor. Perhaps the most powerful man in yes. Europe uh later on devout yeah. devout catholic mm -hmm. but the point the point in this context is this is portugal's blood rival like you were saying before he's go you know he yeah. went he went yeah. from the red sox to the yankees you know uh, you know uh, you know something you know, some, so, you know from the <laughs> brooklyn dodgers to the new york giants this, you know this is a this is their blood rival and and so the you know the portuguese yeah. king regards him as a traitor and, and we'll see what he does about it in in a, in a few minutes but Carlos the first or Charles the yeah. first king of Spain has more prescience. He's more far seen than the Portuguese king. And he, uh, he commissions Magellan to make this voyage. Right? And, and one of the things that yeah. fascinated me when I, when I was reading uh, about it is how uh, mm -hmm. diligent Magellan was. He, he oversaw every aspect, yes. of, you know, rehauling, yeah. you know, repairing the ships, making sure they had all, all the supplies. It's just, you know, uh, just learning, learning whatever was known about the geography and the navigation of, of the time, which was very little as they thought, they yeah. thought Japan was mm -hmm. like 500 nautical miles from the coast of Mexico, you know, from the West coast of Mexico. Yeah. It's more, what is it more like five or 6,000 yeah. in reality, I think. Uh, so yeah, yeah. three mm -hmm. or four. Yeah, I mean the Pacific is just vast. Even flying across it is a drag, you know. It, it, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, never mind. 
uh, sailing across it at 1520, 1521, it took, it took months. I thought would they take them, took them like yeah. three and a half months to get to Guam. That's, that's right. Once, once, they, right. once they entered the Pacific. But anyway, Magellan's preparation, uh, they, they, mm -hmm. he, had, he had made sure he had enough supplies for two years. They had no way of knowing it would be, would be free. But, but, but the way Magellan take, oversaw right. the project, yeah, was, was, really, was really impressive. You know, how conscientious he was. How, yeah. How, uh, you know, how much, how much of the leader he was, you know, he didn't shirk his responsibility. Yeah. So the buck, the buck no, stopped not, not with Magellan. He, yeah, the, the buck stops <laughs> buck here. Stop with you him. Know, Magellan took the responsibility and, and he really oversaw the project brilliantly. Mm -hmm. So I uh, just want to say real fast, he married a Portuguese woman. There were a lot of, there were a lot of Portuguese in Spain. So they're co they're close and basically there are some advantages of being in either country for each other without necessarily being spies and she stayed there she stayed in uh portugal in lisbon as he goes to seville no i'm sorry she stayed in seville uh which is you know the capital at that time of spain and so he's all set five ships 270 men uh, we get to now we're September 1519 that he's planning this expedition and of the 270 men there's a lot of Spanish there's a lot of Portuguese there are Italians there are I think even Irish and all different races which leads to different languages and part of the fear and the skepticism here on the ship was if people are speaking a language you don't understand are they spies are they secretly plotting something so from the get-go this was a, a tough a tough order to fulfill because you already he, as you said he left portugal in a bad way and he's sailing for spain the rival but there's a lot of spanish noblemen on the on the on the ships just similar again to to columbus who had spanish noblemen but columbus was the foreigner uh, as an italian, and, italian. and they didn't okay. trust him yeah yeah okay. so it didn't again the parallels there were just a lot of parallels and these spanish noblemen some refused to call him captain they refused to call him Magellan captain they undercut him when they could uh basically they were planning you know they were they thought he was a spy they thought he was a spy uh, sailing for Portugal under the the Spanish flag. So, um, yeah, you see the, the yeah, right. yeah you see the problems here. The one one is the tribalism that you mentioned already. You know the blood rivalry between yeah. uh, between these mm -hmm. two jingoistic you know nationalist countries, and then two there's the aristocratic elitism. You know the 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 yeah. more Spanish no nobility and and you you know, you were uh, Magellan was the son of a minor nobleman right from from, from Portugal so you're, That's you're right. not quite a commoner yeah. but you're not you're quite a commoner but you're you're beneath our rank aristocratically so you you get that snobbish yes. e elitism uh, you know it does it that's why you know it reminds me. Um, you know, the, the story of Benjamin Franklin and, 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 and America. I don't remember who the historian was. It might have been Joseph Ellis. Yeah, I think it was Joseph Ellis, a great American historian, who said, you know, Franklin showed, mm -hmm. Franklin's rise from, from you know, nobody to, to great man. Uh, it, it, was, it was emblematic of America. You know, aristocracy doesn't matter. What matters is merit. What matters is talent. What matters is honesty. What matters is, is strength of character. And, and these American heroes couldn't have risen in Europe because of the aristocratic prejudices. Wasn't George Washington denied a, you know, a command in, in, in the army because he had passed over, and over, over him? Because, yeah, yep. yeah. yeah, because yeah. He, he, he was American, not British. He was a commoner, not the son of a duke or, or an earl. So this is just, this is just irrational prejudices that his Magellan, who's, you know, he's, he's concerned with competence, you know, with, uh, with getting the job done with, with ability, with with tackling this monumental problem and, and overcoming it and he's got to deal with all these I I irrational prejudices that, that that's militated against him. Mm -hmm. it's not enough that he's got to deal with the storms at sea you know and the and the the yeah. lack of knowledge 
of geography, uh, you know, the no charts, no maps, going off into the unknown. Not enough he's got to deal with all these problems that a rational person you know, has to deal with. He's also got to deal with irrational uh, crew, crew members, prejudiced mm-hmm. crew members. So, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of obstacles confronting Magellan on this journey. Yeah, so what kind of man um, can lead this with all this disparity going on and all of these inner machinations and, and countries <clears throat> against you? Let me just uh, do a, <clears throat> a quick quote here from Manchester. He says, he is a man who lives within, saving the best of himself for himself, enjoying solitude. As a commander, he can be ruthless, tough, tough, tough in the words of a fellow captain. Subordinates, subordinate officers dislike this Dureza, though they concede his supreme competence and quickness with which he rewards those who perform well. Rare traits among commanders of the time. Because of this, he's popular with his crews. Proud of his lineage, meticulous, fiercely ambitious, stubborn, driven, secretive, and iron-willed, the captain general or admiral is possessed by an inner vision which he shares with no one. He wants to be wow. the great hero of his age, right? That's the that's the, that's the inner <laughs> <Yeah>. vision, right? <laughs> does right. Uh, character, you know, moral character, does that is that float around anywhere in this whole <laughs> description? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Competent, iron will get the mm-hmm. job done, right? We were purposeful, Ab- absolutely. Inner strength, strength. <clears throat> yeah. Inner mm-hmm. strength, strength, strength of a purpose, strength of will, strength of character. Yeah, Magellan has all yeah. of, all of those all of those traits. So, mm-hmm. should, we, should we begin the journey? Yeah. So they take the, off. The, the, let's, let's the three year the we three got year map. odyssey. I'll show you in a moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the first stop, Canary Islands. Similar to Columbus, it's it's Spanish territory, um, just slightly west of uh, Portugal and Spain. And already, Magellan sees that his supplies are not what they thought. There was some, I can't say miscalculation, some things were stolen, some property. And on top of that, the Portuguese fleet is chasing him. He's got to outrun them. So right. you're trying to do this, you know, you're trying to do this journey and you got, you got people chasing you, you know, is that going to make you go faster? Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's and, hard. <laughs> yeah, the wind, that yeah, doesn't help the wind, you know, uh, it doesn't help the wind blow. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to have enough problems here, but he's got to have the king of Portugal send the Portuguese fleet after him to punish this traitor for, for sailing <laughs> to Spain. Yeah, yeah, I just, you know, well, Ayn Rand says in her fiction writing course about, about fiction, he says, make things as hard as you can for your hero. Row you know, everything. She certainly yes, does. Exactly. She yeah. certainly does for Howard yeah. Rock, you know, so, in the Fountainhead. And in reality yeah. here, this this is mm-hmm. this is the story of Ferdinand Magellan. Every possible obstacle yeah. that you could think of, uh, you know, is, is thrown at, at Magellan it's, or he needs it's to confront. Thrown at him. But right, yeah, exactly. But like another great explorer said, we like to quote on this show, obstacles are just things to overcome. After all, Ernest Shack, the great That's Ernest Shackleton right. said. Shackleton, Magellan, yeah. Magellan, well, Magellan wants of, to be the great yeah. hero. Yeah, the great hero of his era. Well, you got to overcome all kinds of obstacles yeah. to be a hero, especially the greatest hero. So, mm-hmm. so let's see how he does. So, so he crosses the Atlantic, as you can see on the map. This is the the long line, uh, somewhat in the middle, and lands in Rio de Janeiro, Portugal, which. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Brazil, which actually was settled by the Portuguese uh, oh, yeah, in 1500, right. uh, s- stays there to replenish the they, the women. This is they see the women walking around naked or half naked, and the sailors. Uh, they're just easy, you know, e- easy to deal with. They bring trinkets with them, similar to Lewis and Clark. You know, they bring these gifts, which they trade for different kinds of favors. Uh, they stay there for some time and then plot to go uh, farther south to um, uh, Patagonia, which is what's now um, uh, Argentina. Yeah, it's the tip. And it's getting and near, near, the, near the tip, yeah. the tip of South America. Yeah, you're getting closer down, you know, further from the equator, closer to Antarctica, right? So uh, the, the, weather, yeah. the weather is, is, is brutal. And so they they lay over somewhere for the, for the winter, 
right? Down on the that's right. They the, lay they lay over for the South winter. They, they, they see these giants. They see cannibals. They see you know these different kinds of tribes. You, see, you know, there's some scary scary dudes uh, around here, and uh, and now there's a mutiny planned uh, by several of the captains. Uh, Del Cano is part of it, but uh, the three leaders, Car Cartagena. Uh, Casada and Mendoza are the three who have three different ships. There's still five ships, but three of the captains of three of the ships. So Magellan's outnumbered here, and he has to figure a way how to salvage this journey, how to um, become the leader again. And uh, he does this uh, ingeniously. You know, he, he finds a way, and basically three you know afterwards three of them he executes in, in a brutal manner he's leaving a message here he, this he, is what he, decapi he decapitates, decapitates them right he, he decapitates them first uh, <laughs> yeah then draws and quarters them and does all these other yeah it, it's uh there's there's a lot of brutality again that was the era that was the way you uh showed your your message and um so they now you can't have blame him. You, you can't blame team. him. He's, he's you can't blame him. He's okay. on his own. He's got to deal with all these all these mutineers. He's got to keep the men under control. You can't blame him. Pe execute. I, you know, I would execute these guys yeah. too. You know, if I were him, and then do it in this brutal way to send the message. This is what happens to the mutineers. It, it, you know, in That's the context, right. it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it totally does. Uh, so now he gets to um, the area that he is now called the Magellan Straits, he, he didn't name it that, uh, which is the southern tip of Argentina. There's a, there's a, a thin uh, waterway, which he navigates. It takes a full month to make it through uh, the uh, that yeah. area. And they see all these spots of flames um, right. which is why now they call it Tierra del Fuego because the, the locals, they're shivering and they just, you know, they need fire to, to keep warm. Yeah, and Tierra, Tierra del Fuego, translated to English, means land of fire, right? Isn't that what yeah, that means? that's right. That's right. Um, and now on but, top of that... Um, yeah, but that, yeah, he's, go ahead. he's looking for, looking for a passage through the South American continent, <laughs> which would be enormously yeah. valuable because you don't have to go around you know, uh, Cape, Cape Horn, where the, where the the waters are treacherous. You have the, you have the two the yeah. confluence of two oceans, and the the, the waters uh, mm -hmm. can be extre extremely dangerous, especially to those relatively small vessels that they had. And I, from what I understand from from my reading, Robert, the navigation of those the, that the Straits of, of Magellan are enormously treacherous. That that navigating it was one of Magellan's greatest achievements. That this was a, a, an enormously arduous task. Yes. And Magellan was. Yes. They had, they made several false starts going, you know, looking for the uh, waterway through the South American continent, going up the, the, from the estuaries of various rivers. But they found it in the Straits of Magellan, hundreds of miles yeah. from from Cape Horn. Right, saved it saved several hundred miles and very treacherous. That's water, right. Through very treacherous waters. Treacherous water, achievement. freezing cold because mm -hmm. close to Antarctica, right? Yeah. And uh, th this was this was an enormous achievement, and I think uh, to show how difficult it was, this is fifteen twenty or fifteen twenty one. Um, yeah. You know, uh, subsequent expeditions went out, try you know, trying to you know replicate Magellan's achievement, and they couldn't find the the Straits of Magellan. They you know they or they couldn't or they couldn't navigate it. It wasn't until another great yeah. seaman, Sir Francis Drake. Who, who who was British? Sixty years in, later, uh, yes. Yeah, in like roughly fifteen eighty, mm -hmm. perhaps. Uh, yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. it was it was mm -hmm. it was decades later before before Magellan's uh, feat was was replicated. So it shows it shows you know why Magellan has the reputation as the extraordinary seaman and navigator that he has. Great point, Andy. Yes, great point because it was tried over and over. The king. The Spanish king tried it over and over and over again. He sent John Cabot, he sent Corti Cortez uh, uh, to try it, and they all failed. Uh, and Del Cano, who was the one who did make it all, all the way, they all failed. And uh, 
uh, when and Del Cano like was with said, Magellan. That shows yeah, something. he was with he was with Magellan, so he had first hand knowledge. Of, <laughs> but know, he was part. Of, he was plotting though. He right. He, he was, was too busy. he was envious. He was and too he was busy plotting. plotting to, yeah. he was too busy plotting <laughs> to navigate. Right. I got it. <laughs> pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> to, right. to read the. No oh, actually, let me let me just say one one thing, Andy. Um. So of the of this the um the the uh, two hundred seventy one of them, his name was Antonio Pigafetta. Uh, an Italian from Venice, and he, this book, Amazon is just so awesome because his his book is called the Voy Magellan's Voyages, and he documented the, the entire the entire journey, the, the first circumnavigation, and made it all the way through. And um, uh, he watched this happening. He saw he went in there just pretty much being a journalist, like he went along for the ride to to write what he was uh, observing. And when he saw what Magellan went through, oh, his stature was rising. That Pigafetta came to just, you know, idolize, idolize him. And we'll, I'll give you a couple of his quotes. Manchester quotes him a lot in, in uh, his um, his book as well. So we get to March fifteen twenty. Yeah, from what I let me let me just that, interject here. Yeah, from what I understand, Go historians ahead. today we generally regard Pigafetta's account as accurate, right? They, as 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 yes. generally truthful yeah. and and valid so so that, that yeah. it, it's great to, it's great to have a truthful chronicler along with you along for the ride you know when you're doing these performing these heroic feats of daring do and picafetta was able to yeah. you know to chronicle it for, for magellan so mm -hmm. we have that first hand mm -hmm. we had that first hand so they make it of the voice that's right incredibly and like i said you can get it you you can get it on amazon 10 bucks uh, kindle i just i'm just so grateful that uh yeah uh, well we give jeff bezos books. his his proper is amazon amazon is a great <laughs> company whatever his whatever his yeah. other failings are uh, amazon's a magnificent yeah, company. exactly that's right that's right i mean for 10 bucks you could read a document that was written 500 a first hand account read, written 500 years ago that's just amazing mm -hmm. so yeah, magellan is. gets to the to the other side uh which doesn't have a name uh he ends up calling it mar pacifica because it is so tranquil the pacific ocean is so tranquil and again yeah. he thinks it's uh, three four days yeah. until he's in uh the land yeah, well, of spices Magella, 99 Magella. days <laughs> Magellan hadn't encountered any typhoons, you know, in the South China Seas, but, uh, but, you know, true. but yeah, the That's Pacific, true. of course. Yeah. Well, but still it was very tranquil in his experience. Uh, Pacific means peaceful, of course, in, in English. So yeah, the, yes. the peaceful sea or the, you know, the Pacific sea. I mean, yeah, Magellan, so Magellan is another, another thing he's known for. He named, he named this vast, this, the name we still use today, 500 years later, this vast ocean. So, yeah. but anyway, yeah, and, yeah, they thought, they, they, I, I, wasn't it, wasn't it Manchester? I, I didn't finish that whole section uh, on Manchester last night, although mm -hmm. I read it, you know, years ago. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. They thought, they thought that Japan was like, in, on the, the crude maps of the day, they thought Japan was like 500 nautical miles due west of the Mexican West Coast, I think. Of Mexico. In reality, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where in reality, it's like five or 6,000 miles. So it was like 10 times yeah. the distance. Yeah, it yeah. took them like three and a, yeah. three and a half months. Or, three and a half months to to three from, and a half from the months. Magellan. What do you think to, they're uh, eating? To Guam. There's Guam. A, many are dying know, of scurvy. Many, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're eating rats. They're chewing on the rope, you know, to get. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing all these, you know, gross, you know, activities to try to let stay me, alive. You know, yeah, so you know, many are not ask, making. Let me ask you this, Robert. Couldn't they fish? Couldn't yeah. they fish off the off the side of the? Of, I would the ship? think so. I, I, that's that part baffles me because nobody mentions the word fish, and yeah, maybe they just I, couldn't yeah. catch enough, or they didn't have a means to to eat that. They could I, use I, the rat. I, they could use the rats for bait, right? Right, rather than eat the rats, they could use the rats for bait. Maybe catch. You know, catch what some I would fish do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm surprised about that, but I've never in Manchester. And there's one other book um, that I've read. This is like an epic. Over the edge of the world is uh, like a, a 
30 chapter volume uh, just on Magellan. That's, that's really, uh, yeah. uh, really well, impressive. But and, and let me, let me point this out too. Well, I, as I remember, for, as I remember from Manchester's account, one of the reasons it took so long to cross the Pacific was that there were days when the winds would just be calm. There was no, you know, that the, right. the winds just weren't That's blowing. Right. A, sailing, a sailing vessel, you're at the mercy of, of the winds. Yeah. Well, in that case, you're not, you're certainly not right. moving too fast. You know, you're, not, you're barely moving yep. at all. You're certainly not moving too fast to fish. So I'm not sure. I'm not, was it, yeah. mm -hmm. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. But, um, but anyway, yeah, people, a lot, a lot of the guys died. They're starving. starving. You know, which, which is a vitamin C, yeah, a vitamin C starving. deficiency. That's right. Also, I just want to say there was one, uh, after the mutiny, um, one ship went back. Oh, yeah, to, that's right. That's right. Uh, went back to Spain, just went the same way it came. They just gave up. So he's down to four ships. John's down to four ships. Yes. Uh, thank you, Dylan. This is a, a scene right after the mutiny where he's demanding loyalty. He's like, look, if you want to get there, I'm going to, I'm going to get there. And you'll see, you can now see what I did to those who uh, questioned my authority and tried to overthrow me and they don't know what they're doing. And uh, here he is uh, gaining uh, complete authority. Right. You know, that's a good, that's a good, so, that's a good point, Robert, because the one ship that turned tail and ran, you know, and, you know, recrossed the Atlantic, and head, headed back to, to Spain, they arrive at Spain and they're bad mouthing Magellan to the to the king, right? They're claiming that Magellan disobeyed the king's right. orders and, and so on and so forth. So uh, Which if, Magellan Magellan's yeah. reputation was already tarnished before they even you know had a chance to complete the journey. And that came to his wife and his son. They were under house arrest and never made oh, it. Right. They, they never survived. Actually, so his lineage was cut off because of these. Uh, Spaniards, you know, we're throwing more and more things at him, and he, <laughs> you know, it's right. amazing. How, right. how about a hundred days out in out yeah. in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, a hundred days in the middle of nowhere <laughs> to get to a point where they're going to start throwing you pay, spears. You beat the start throwing spears at us, right? <laughs> speaking, speaking about throwing things. Yeah, you beat the cannibals. Okay, you beat the cannibals. You beat the freezing cold, <laughs> and and now you know it's like where's their land? They finally they find Guam. Uh, which is a Micronesia in the middle of nowhere. We covered on the, you know, on the Midway episode, Guam was uh -huh. an American base, like a, right near what's now the uh, International State Line, which they didn't have back then. But guess what? That's what this uh, uh, expedition, uh, that was one of the things that came out of it was the date line. So in Guam, they're, they get fed. They, they, they take care of the sick. Some still die. You know, they're just losing, losing uh, people as, uh, as they go. But there's some trading that goes on. It's, 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 uh, it's somewhat productive. They stay there for a little while, then boom. Yeah, well, they're, they're able to replenish, to right? Water, fresh yes. water, fruits and, and foods. They, they, they do some repairs mm -hmm. on, the, on the vessels. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a productive and they rest after their tribulations and then, and then, and then continue yeah. heading West, right. And, 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 and arrive faithfully continue heading in, the, in what, yeah, in what That's today right. is the Philippines. And here's where That's we right. get to so, uh, Magellan's, we can you go know, back uh, Magellan's uh, to, to the map, please. Yeah. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah. Here's where we get to what I would consider Magellan's fatal flaw. By this time, he's a religious zealot, right? I mean, and, and Manchester- Which was not the mission. Yes, <laughs> right. which was not the right. mission. Religious conversion, they made it clear. Manchester makes it clear. That was not the reason. You know, just as Lewis and Clark, they didn't go there to convert Indians. They went there to trade or to take over. They went there peacefully. And that was the mission, was not religious conversion. It was, so right. this momentary lapse of reason, literally, right. you know, Magellan, it went right. to his head right. and yeah. Yes, and as, especially not conversion by the sword, which is what he was doing, you know, in, no. in, in, that, in, in that battle. But yeah, Magellan was a, um, and, and, Man, and in Manchester's book, A World Lit Only by Fire, you know, uh, he, makes, he, he makes that yeah. point. Part of, part of, the, part of the theme of, of that book generally, which is much broader than, than Magellan, as you pointed out, Robert, you know, is the, 
the failings of religion, in this case, Christianity, to, you know, develop a civilized society. And you had to go through the Renaissance and the you know, rebirth of reason and secularism yeah. to, to, to develop civilization, yes. you know, in a, in a much more, uh, yeah. you know, and, 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 and to promote human flourishing in a much more advanced way. But Magellan's a devout Catholic. Yeah. And, uh, and he succeeds. And the, the most in devout, if we could, yeah, yeah I'm ahead. sorry, Andy. It, the most devout were on the Iberian Peninsula because they had been fighting the Moors, like I said earlier, for 700 yeah. years. So it wasn't even Christianity, it was Catholicism. Martin Luther was only 1517, only a couple of years earlier, and, and Magellan's right. gone 1519. So it's not as if there were options here. It was Catholicism, and that's it. And let's convert these, um, you know, the, these uh, indigenous people to, and, and they somewhat succeeded with, uh, so yeah. now we're in the Philippines, which are several different islands. It wasn't right. called the Over Philippines 2000, 50 years later. But, Over 2,000 Filipinos, yeah. as I recall, were converted to Catholicism by, by That's Michelin. right, yeah. And, uh, you know, and Manchester, right. point, Manchester points out nicely. And by the way, William Manchester is a very good historian. He wrote that great biography of Douglas MacArthur, what was it, American Caesar? I think it was the 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 title, yeah. mm -hmm. and he was a, he was mm -hmm. history professor at, at Wesleyan University in uh, in Connecticut for, yeah. for for a number of years, mm -hmm. and uh, he points out nicely that the the religiosity, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, this is a commercial voyage, just like Lewis and Clark. You know, the Lewis and Clark map yes. the Northwest. You know, re reach you know reach the West Coast and open up you know trading possibilities. You know, with 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 Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, similarly for, for Magellan's voyage, let's get to the Spice Islands, you know, and, and uh, make, make the claim for the Spice Islands. So, you know, and, and so we get all these spices, you know, for our food and everything. It was a commercial, it was a commercial voyage. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, re Magellan's religiosity went to his head. He thought, the, you know, Manchester covers this nicely, that he, he was the emissary of God, so he was invincible. And yeah. Uh, here was a man preeminently of reason who was so meticulous in all his preparations and in dealing with all these earthly obstacles and everything. But, you know, re religion is a series of faith-based beliefs. It's not grounded in, in observation reality. And these faith-based beliefs uh, made, made him feel like he was God's emissary. Uh, he, Jesus was with him. And they, he, he, he tackled these recalcitrant natives who did not want to be converted to Christianity with like a handful of guys relative to a huge uh, number of, of the enemy. He had God on his side after all. Uh, you know, he, he, so he was, he was you know, unbeatable. And turns out that maybe God well, wasn't with every him. Every mistake, if we even break down every, every mistake, he made every mistake in the book, Andy. So there's 1,500 on one side. They planned. Yeah, and he had, like, and he had, he had and like fifty tells guys. Us, he had like fifty guys on this side, and he was an experienced, trained soldier. He knew better. He knew better than all of this. The Marines were on board. He told the Marines, "You guys stay home. I got this." And they're like, "What?" <laughs> and he takes fifty of the fifty nobodies with him, and then they get into uh, shallow waters. Now, all the fifteen hundred Filipinos are on on the beach with actually not literally on the beach a little bit farther back and with you know bamboo spears and just the, these super primitive uh tools and weapons and so uh actually let me just read the way pick a feta let me iterate let me iterate one, yes. one point for us just because it bears repetition yeah. magello is a highly experienced literally battle tested combat veteran -tested. been through all these yeah. wars yeah. he knew better than this than his his where his where the faith based belief just you know made him made him irrational he thought he was he was god's emissary so he yeah. was therefore he was invincible yeah yeah so pick a factor recaptures he, re, he recaps the scene he says when morning came 49 of us leaped into the water up to our thighs and walk through water for more than two crossbow fights, uh, flights before we could reach the shore. The boats could not approach nearer because of certain rocks in the water. The other 11 men remained behind to guard the boats. When we reached the land, those men had formed three divisions to the number of more than 1,500 persons. 
When they saw us, they charged down upon us with exceedingly loud cries. Musketeers and crossbows shot at the distance for about half an hour uselessly. Um, because the shots just went into the seal, shields. Recognizing the captain, so many turned upon him that they knocked off his helmet twice. An Indian hurled a bamboo spear into the captain's face, but later the latter immediately killed him with his lance, uh, which with his left on the Indian's body. Then trying to lay a uh, hand on sword, he could draw it only halfway because he had been wounded in the arm with a bamboo spear. When the natives saw that, they all hurled themselves upon him. One of them wounded him in the left leg with a, with a large cutlass, which resembles a scimitar, only being larger. That caused the captain to fall face downward when immediately they rushed upon him with iron and bamboo spears with all their cutlasses until they killed our mirror, our light, our comfort, and our true guide. Uh, Imagine oh, all, now all the this all of his crew are watching this. Everybody, even the Rajas from the other island, everyone's witnessing this. You know, April twenty seventh, fifteen twenty one. They all see this happening, and you know, just true devastation. And yeah, in fact, the way I think Manchester described it, they're waiting for Jesus to come and save him. You know, like the, the, this is how. Found, you know, uh, reality doesn't matter now because Jesus is going to come and save me. And, and it's like, no, sorry, reality is real. And these spears um, are, are real as well. And it reminds me, Andy, a little bit of Lord of the Rings, the movie, when uh, uh, Denethor sees little Pippin and he's like, wow, how come you lived and my son Boromir did not? And he said, uh, you know, a sword and a bow and arrow can kill a great man but it took many to kill Boromir, you know, over and over again. And that was what they did. It was many of them, uh, these spears to, to kill um, uh, Magellan. Right. But yeah, that was it. Yeah, and it reminds me, I mean, this is uh, a real life story of a tragic hero. You know, that this is a perfect embodiment of the tragic yeah. flaw theory bringing down a great yeah. man because magellan yes. was a great man for all the reasons that we have recounted and yet his tragic flaw was because of his uh commitment to catholicism and he thought like you said that jesus was with him and therefore he was invincible and he he, mm -hmm. he was he has this experienced combat you know hardened combat veteran making every military mistake that you could possibly make because his brain is addled yes. by these by these faith-based yes. police that brought him to this brutal to this yeah. brutal death you know on a, a lonely mm -hmm. shore uh, thousands of miles from home in the in in the philippines it's just it's it's the story yeah. of a of a tra it's a it's the demise of a tragic hero it reminds i just thought of that because yeah. you, you know i'm I'm working on an essay for TOS right now for the fall issue on the great tragic heroes. And Gail Wyden features in it yes. heavily, but, you know, along with Oedipus yes. and Hamlet. <laughs> but, you know, in real life, mm -hmm. this is a, 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 an exemplar of the, of the tragic. It's as grand as they come. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The fatal flaw theory that's famous to the, to, to, in describing Shakespeare's yeah. uh, tragic character. The mm -hmm. fatal flaw here being faith-based yeah. beliefs, uh, or, or faith-based beliefs, uh, held preeminently over reason and and magellan was such a rational person in all these in, in, in such a rational man all these other ways but here his his religiosity yeah. just became dominant in his character and led him to mm -hmm. a, a tragic demise it's very sad really sad yeah and brutal it's not just he died some you know some death needlessly it's just brutal death you know the knee, trying to convert the heathens who clearly didn't want to be converted <laughs> you know no no and for, if we could backtrack a little bit his uh slave enrique was from not far you know we if we look on the map malacca is not very far from the philippines you know just a days maybe days journey away on boat <clears throat> and he realized he had circum enrique was the first one to actually circumnavigate because he started right. there was captured and went all the way west, and then, um, uh, although, like you said, Magellan did it in two two tries. So Magellan knew he had made it, 
you know, he had made it. Uh, and I think that was also part of his hubris that, you know, I, I made it to the Spice Islands and now I can do, you know, I'm, I am invincible in, in that sense. So it's right. good I that could, I could do no wrong, it, right? I could, you know? I could do no wrong at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens after that? <clears throat> well, um, even the other tribes, you know, they, they run for their lives. The, the remaining ships, they just, they just bolt. They're scattered. Uh, his nephew, Barbosa, uh, Magellan's uh, nephew, Barbosa, and a, a few of the other Portuguese, they're basically killed by the, the, uh, the Spaniards, uh, led by Del Cano. Um, he's, they only want the Spanish. Uh, making it all the way back. And they, they do go to uh, Malacca. They do <clears throat> uh, run into some, you know, uh, issues because they're not as trained as Magellan. But if, eventually they do make it back uh, September 6, 1522. Um, it, was like the 18, 18 or 19, eight, it was like 18 or 19 survivors of 270 men. Were initially 18 of with them emaciated. Uh, yeah, they, they uh, 18 emaciated <laughs> um, <clears throat> victims make it uh, return. And even in at, Portugal. Out of 270, right? Out of 270, right? Out of 270. Wow. Mm. Wow. And wow. so the king, King Charles, wants to know an account of it. Uh, you know, they know Magellan's dead. And he asks, he leaves Pigafetta outside. He doesn't care his, his journals or anything. He wants two Spanish um, uh, journalists who cataloged uh, the story. So Delcano basically, you know, he rewrites history. He claims, you know, Magellan went crazy. He was a Portuguese spy, this and that. They, they completely rewrite the history. Um, uh, the king wants to try five, five or six more times he wants to to retrace uh, the route with these different captains. Fortunately, Delcano dies of scurvy during one of those. He sent on one of those uh, missions, so he didn't get his due. Uh, but Magellan's name, they tried to wipe it from the book. His lineage is gone. Uh, and now both Portugal and Spain, that's the other problem, is that neither of them are really recognizing him because he in your faced uh, the Portuguese king and then uh, the Spanish, you know, wanted nothing to do with him or his record. So uh, Picafetta yeah, be, because has because his, journal, his his mutinous subordinates besmirched his reputation, right? Because they lied, they lied about. That's him. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and this is where reality wins out eventually, because Picafetta realizes he has the he has a true story, and he goes around to different uh, kingdoms and says, "Wait a minute, I have the I have the facts here." And um, he gets an agreement that nobody will publish for 20 years his story. He's the only one who, who has the right to, uh, to publish this. And he does. Um, if we could bring up, um, uh, Dylan, the, uh, the monuments. So you and I were talking about this earlier, Andy, how monuments, Ayn Rand says, uh, the, the people who are persecuted their whole lives and uh, then they put up a monument. This is uh, in Lisbon, I've gone here, and uh, it's, it's called the Monument of Discoverers. And we see Magellan, uh, Fernão de Magalhães, I think is how you pronounce it in Portuguese, uh, behind da Gama. And Henry was the one who launched the whole age of discovery. He's right in, in the front. And so they're recognizing here, there. And then the other one, Dylan, if you don't mind, is in, Magellan's hometown where he was born, uh, Sabrosa, they have him with the Portuguese spelling, you know, pointing ever onwards and recognizing the man. You know, again, Ayn Rand says it's a hundred years after they're gone. They, that they yeah, a hundred, a hundred years after it's too late to matter, right? They put up a statue. <laughs> too late to matter, yeah, yeah. But his legacy, Andy, you know, first circumnavigation and the fact that people tried it over and over again afterwards and, and, and didn't succeed until Fred Drake, you know, what does he do? He changes the, 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 the <clears throat> geography of the globe. He changes the science of navigation. He changes the economics because he's there for trade. 
Okay. I mean, they didn't have free trade as, as such, but this was a step towards, if you go back to the Bastiat episode where we talked about where goods cross borders instead of armies, you know, there, there's, that's what you want. You want goods instead of, you know, armies crossing borders and that's a free trade. So we're getting this, the, the seed of it that Magellan was, you know, launching the modern world. This expedition, yeah, the, I, I could say, I mean, launched the modern world. You know, absolutely. If, if for no other reason than um, the knowledge game, mapping out the Pacific, having ma yeah. having the beginnings yes. of maps and charts, and knowing an accurate appraisal of the distances, you know, knowing the, the extent and the geography of our world. That's what explorers do. I mean, the, they explore the unknown and, and, after, and, and after the explorations, the unknown is known. And uh, this is what this is, you know, uh, uh, in addition to all the other accomplishments, this, I think, is the greatest achievement of Magellan. Mapping out the yeah. Pacific, you know, uh, show, showing what, uh, showing the, the vast extent, you know, of, of the Earth's yes. circumference and, 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 and what it takes, what it takes to circumnavigate mm -hmm. the globe. And, you know, that, and that it's, it's mm -hmm. an extraordinary, it's an extraordinarily difficult undertaking. Uh, and so I think that, you know, mm -hmm. the knowledge. The knowledge of of the Earth's surface is, uh, yeah, and its extent, and and its oceans. In yeah. this case, especially the Pacific. This is what this is what the I think the preeminent accomplishment of, of Magellan's voyage is was, was this is why we celebrate yeah. him, you know, as the towering hero that yeah. he is. So Manchester, let me just close on on what he says on this idea of heroism. He says the hero acts alone, without encouragement, relying solely on the conviction and his own inner resources. Shame does not discourage him, neither does obloquy, indifferent to approval, reputation, wealth, or love. He cherishes only his personal sense of honor, which he permits no one else to judge. Wow, that's a tribute to heroism more, you know, more broadly and to Magellan. Uh, yeah, and, to, to, so, and, to and Chester gets it right. Independence. Yeah. You know, he's not, not care about the obloquy or the, the denunciations hurled on him by by society. He has his own has his own vision. You know, throughout the centuries, there were men who started down new roads. Yes. You know, armed with armed with you know visions. I don't remember. I read the exact words. Their own vision. Armed visions. They were they're armed with their, armed own, with their own, own vision. vision. Right. And that was that's a man who had his own vision. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's five hundred years we, ago. Yeah, to, you know exactly to the to this year to 2022, and I think we could say in closing, mm -hmm. then Robert, I think you know we we could salute the Captain General or Admiral and yes. say Admiral Magellan. In our judgment, you fulfilled your mission to be the great hero of your age, and so we thank That's you right. very much, you know, for the knowledge gained and for opening up the trade routes. And if every if all your other your other right. accomplishments, you know, we mourn your brutal death on the Philippine in the Philippines, but your memory is, yeah. you know, will last forever. Your 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 heroic memory is immortal. So, I think yes. we could. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we could say, uh, say thank you, to Magellan. All the, yes, mm -hmm. thank you, uh, Admiral mm -hmm. or Captain General Magellan, <laughs> and we could say to all the other hero worshippers out there in the world. I, I hope we, we, we should all strive to have a more heroic day and to, and to lead more heroic yes. lives. And we will be back again next week on The Hero Show. So we will see you then, everybody.